Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will talk about the relationship between Kurdistan and Lebanon. If you have missed any of our previous relationship videos, you can click the link on top of the screen right now to get to any of the 7 previous relationship videos. This video is split up into two parts where we first will be talking about a group of Kurds that lives in Lebanon, their history and their present situation in the country and later on in the video about the current relation between Kurdistan and the state of Lebanon. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below which relationship video you want us to do next and subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, account name is everything about Kurdistan in order to take part of amazing Kurdistan pictures, news about this channel and much more. On Instagram you will be able to vote on which video you want us to do next week. Now without further ado let's get into the video. Lebanon is a country which is located southwest of Syria with the population of about 7 million people. Among the population there is a big minority of Kurds, an estimation of around 150,000 Kurds in Lebanon in the year of 2019. We need to go back to the 12th century and the Crusader Wars. We are in the times when the Kurdish Muslim leader Salahaddin Ayyubi conquered big parts of Middle East and Northern Africa. In his different conquests, Kurdish tribes were often placed in strategic important locations to settle with their families. Saladin and his administration did this in order to secure the local people's loyalty and keep his territories in check. This became the time when the first Kurdish family settled in Lebanon. The Kurds of Lebanon would come to rule the area known as modern Lebanon for many years both during the Ayyubi dynasty ruled by Saladin but also after that in other different empires. The Ayyubi dynasty was not alone using the settling tactics to secure different areas and borders. During the Ottoman Empire a bunch of more loyal Kurds were sent both to Syria and Lebanon to settle. All of these always got administrative roles in the ruling empire. One of the most known families who heritage from Kurdish families and still have political roles in Lebanon is the Jumblad family, which originally in Kurdish was known as the Chanpolad family. In modern times Walid Jumblad is one of the leaders of Lebanon's Druze people and president of the more secular progressive socialist party. Beside being placed by different empires, the rest of the Kurds arriving to Lebanon has done so by political reasons, fleeing from the oppression performed by either Turkey, Iraq, Iran or Syria. The first big fleeing groups of Kurds arrived in Lebanon in the 1920s and came from Mardin and Bhutan in the Turkish occupied Kurdistan as a result of violence, repression and genocide. A bunch also came from Iraqi occupied Kurdistan during this period. The Kurds of Lebanon mostly lives in the capital city Beirut's western parts. As a result of the Syrian civil war, many Kurds also fled to Lebanon, settling in the northeastern parts of the capital city. However, unlike the Kurds in Iran, Turkey, Syria and Iraq, the Kurds in Lebanon has not made any appeal for autonomy or separation, mainly due to the fact that Lebanon doesn't occupy any part of what is seen as Greater Kurdistan. Also, the Kurds of Lebanon is arguably too few to perform any social demands for independence within Lebanon. Such an independent movement would either how not be possible since the Kurds as mentioned mostly lives in the capital city. If so, where would the autonomy of Kurds be standing? The Lebanese state has minor problems with the Kurdish minority regarding political rights for the Kurds. In 2018, Kurdish in official school were proposed in law. However, nothing has happened and many of the Kurds in Lebanon still feel like second class citizens due to their lack of equal rights with the rest of the people and due to social poverty. More of this later in the video. The Kurdish people of Lebanon is divided into two main groups. While approximately all of them are Sunni Muslims, about one third speaks the Kurmanji dialect, while the rest of the Kurds in Lebanon speaks an Arabic dialect mixed with Kurdish and Turkish influences. 
Now, what's the reason behind this? Why does the Kurds of Lebanon speak Arabic? Well, let's look over some other minorities in the Middle East. For example, the Mandians in Iraq. They have a very strong grip of their identity as Mandians and their religion and their culture, but no grip at all of their language as they today only speak Arabic. The reason for this is the number of the population. The Kurds has throughout time been able to keep their language due to the large number of our people, while peoples such as the Mandians, for example, hasn't been able to do so due to the much smaller number of people. The same thing goes for example Kurds of Palestine who today completely speaks only Arabic and this due to the fact that the smaller number of the Palestinian Kurds has been isolated among Arabs throughout time making them forgetting their language step by step. For the same reason some Kurds of Lebanon doesn't speak Kurdish anymore. In 1994 Rafiq Hariri the Prime Minister of Lebanon worked actively to help the Kurdish community of Lebanon. He had obvious interest in doing so as it gained him more sunny votes and during the years of Hariri the Kurdish community saw an improvement. However Hariri was assassinated in 2005 as a suicide bomber took him and 21 others in a suicide attack. Despite having some problems in Lebanon, the Kurds there all agree that the life is much simpler than the oppression they faced in Turkish, Iranian, Iraqi and Syrian occupied Kurdistan. Kurds in Lebanon have their right to demonstrate and speak, to celebrate Nowruz and any other Kurdish holiday without fearing for their lives or worrying about ending up in prison. Among the Kurds who settled in the 1940s and the 1950s, very few had any education, leading to that the Kurds were settled in the very poor areas of Lebanon. However, in time, Kurds of Lebanon would develop several skills in certain neighborhoods, making them locally famous as house painters, tailors, constructionists, carpenters, and merchants. According to several sources, the Kurds of Lebanon didn't only suffer their socio-economic and political stance due to poor economics and educations, but also due to the fact that a lot of them is without Lebanese citizenships. At least, this was a major problem until the mid-1990s, where the Kurdish situation marginally became better under the leadership of Hariri. The problem of Kurdish citizenships had, at the time, been going on for a long time. Kurds of Lebanon realized the value of citizenships upon the beginning of 1941 when war came to Lebanon. During World War II, many Kurds of Lebanon was denied food rations and prioritizing shelter because of that they missed citizenships. In response, Kurds rushed to apply for citizenships but found out that it was too late to do so. In the early 1960s, the Kurds of Lebanon who still didn't have citizenships turned for help by Kemal Junblat, at the time socialist leader which served as Minister of Interior. He eventually granted what was called unspecified citizenships, which at least saw that the children of most Lebanese Kurds would be granted citizenships if they were born in Lebanon. According to a report of the Kurdish situation within Lebanon, and I will link the full report in the description box below, the Kurds of Lebanon mostly belong to the lower class citizen group in Lebanon. Among the lower class, the Kurds are considered to be the lowest of them just because of their non-Arabic belonging. This ethnic differentiation denies many of them employment, humanitarian support and equal treatment in government offices even after they become citizens. In 1958, as the Iraqi monarchy fell, the Kurds of Lebanon got their chance to increase their awareness of the Kurdish question overall. In the upcoming years of 1961 and 1975, a Kurdish war within Iraq broke out and during this time Mullah Mustafa Barzani found his publicity platform for the war in the more open society of Beirut, Lebanon, where tens of thousands Kurds lived. The Kurds of Lebanon started to organize themselves and the interest of finding their own political organizations increased. Among the first political party of Kurdish rule was the KDP branch within Lebanon founded by Jamil Mihu in 1970. 
the party's first priorities was to increase and better the rights of the Kurds within the Lebanon society and a better chance for Barzani to publicize the Kurdish national movement in Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan. In 1970, the Lebanese government legalized the KDP branch in Lebanon after a demand of Mullah Mustafa Barzani. However, the KDP branch of Lebanon would in time divide into many different organizations and today there is at least eight parties that confidently can claim their outbreak of KDP branch of Lebanon. During the late 70s and early 80s, the Kurds could experience the formation and rise of another Kurdish resistant group, the PKK. As the PKK took shape, its leader Abdullah Öcalan formed training camps in both Rojava, which is Syrian-occupied Kurdistan, but also in Lebanon. During the early 1980s, the PKK and its movement got more and more support by Lebanon's Kurds, even though a majority still supported the Barzanis of the KDP. In the Lebanon War 1982, as Israel invaded the country, allegedly to strike on Palestinian resistance groups, the PKK took Palestine's side in Lebanon to fight the invading Israeli armies. This partly increased the Lebanese thinking of the Kurdish people in the country since many Kurds in the mid-1980s had joined the PKK resistance and thereof the resistance against Israel. In modern days, the Kurds of Lebanon is facing a better future where more and more are adapting themselves into the Lebanese society. However, upon 2019, approximately 45% of the Kurdish minority in Lebanon misses Lebanese citizenships. The minority of Kurds has also increased in the recent events in Afrin, Kobani, and the rest of Rojava and many of the people brings a nationalistic aura back to the Lebanese Kurds, giving the Kurds their hope to not forget their identity just as Kurds and other peoples throughout time due to their minority status has done. Regarding the relationship between the state of Lebanon and Kurdistan, one must understand that large parts of Lebanon answers under Iran. This is one of the major reasons that Lebanon rejected the Kurdish referendum in 2017, probably on order from Iran, who was one of the strongest powers against the referendum. In the end of 2015, a representative from the Lebanese embassy in Iraq visited the KRG to discuss an opening of a representative office in the Kurdistan region. In the meeting between the representative and, at the moment, Kurdish Prime Minister Nishirvan Barzani, Walid al Husani, the representative, expressed great gratitude to the Peshmerga fighters for their struggle against the Islamic State. Comparing with other countries in the area, especially those occupying Kurdistan, Lebanon must be seen as a very tolerant and free country. During the recent event against the Rojava Kurds, we've seen large protests and demonstrations performed by the Lebanese Kurds against mostly the Turkish state. In this, we've seen flags of Öcalan and PKK freely rise in the air. There is no doubt about that this is due to historical good relations between the PKK Kurds and the Lebanese insurgencies. The Lebanese government still has room for improvements towards the Kurds of the country, not at least in the question of poverty and citizenship. However, comparing the times between today and the 50s and 60s, more and more Kurds are receiving their citizenships and thereof their place in the society with work and life improvements. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below which relationship you want us to do next and also subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you don't miss any future videos on this channel. Now, don't forget to visit us on Instagram to show your vote about which video we should do next week.